How's it going everyone? It is I, PC, and today we're going to be taking a look at the last film that Bruce Lee was ever associated with, which wasn't by choice, but by design. I'm of course talking about Game of Death from 1978. So initially this film was Bruce Lee's project as he was director, writer, producer, and the main star. He started working on this film in 1972, yet he had to put this project on hold to go film Enter the Dragon, the movie that would create the international martial arts star that we all know and love. After Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee was all set to go back to filming Game of Death, yet unfortunately he would pass away on July 20th of 1973. Thus, the film would remain unfinished. That is, until it was picked up again in 1978, only this time it would be directed by Robert Klaus, the same director who did Enter the Dragon. While the film does use some of the archived footage that Bruce Lee had worked on prior to his death, the rest of the film had to be made using Bruce Lee lookalikes, and it had a completely different story from the one that Bruce Lee had originally written. I should also mention that the movie had a lot of replacements for the cast from the original footage, including Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who refused to be any part of this. And I guess that's mainly because he saw the writing on the wall with this shit. So rather than just taking him out of the movie entirely, they decide to replace him with another actor who looks nothing like him. When the film was released, it managed to do well in the box office, however, many have criticized this film for its sheer exploitive nature, and those who were close to Bruce Lee found it to be in such poor taste. This of course would be the film that started the whole Bruceploitation film craze in the late 70s to early 80s, which I hope to cover in another video someday, but for now, I just want to focus on Game of Death. So the movie opens up with the famous fight scene of Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee from Way of the Dragon. Yet it actually turns out to be a movie set. Because meta! So in this film we follow a martial arts actor named Billy Lowe, who is supposed to be portrayed by Bruce Lee, yet we can clearly see that it isn't Bruce Lee. Instead, they just put makeup on a lookalike and try to cover up his face as much as they can. Ah, but hold your horses! Cause they got a trick up their sleeves. They also use old clips of Bruce Lee, which the film grains don't even match, nor do the backgrounds even match. Yet to add more insult to injury, in one of the clips they decided to photoshop a towel around him and change the dialogue. So you got in here, finally. Read my lips, this is what I'm saying, even though my lip flaps do not match. But then they go the extra mile by having the actor hide his face behind a cardboard cutout of Bruce Lee's head taped to a mirror. I don't know about you guys, but I'm totally convinced, mm-hmm. So Billy gets confronted in his dressing room by Steiner, played by Hugh O'Brien, who is a henchman for a criminal syndicate run by Dr. Land, played by Dean Jagger. He tells Billy that he should join the syndicate, yet Billy refuses to join and what we get is perhaps one of the worst jump cuts in cinema history. No! Yes, you saw that. They cut away to a clip of the actual Bruce Lee only to revert back to the fake Bruce Lee. Seriously, why go through all this trouble of tricking people? We know that it isn't Bruce Lee, so enough already! Steiner goes back to Dr. Land and tells him that Billy refused to join. I think we ought to squeeze a little. Yeah, just squeeze a little. Oh Christ, I don't even want to know what that implies. In the next scene, we see that Billy has a girlfriend named Anne played by Colin Camp. And this is what she used to look like. Whoa! And now this is what Colin Camp- Whoa! What the hell? I guess you could say Father Time hasn't been too kind to Colin Camp, but that could be said about most celebrities in Hollywood. But you know what? Let's play fair here. This was Robert De Niro back then, and this is Robert De Niro now. Dear Christ, he looks like my grandfather trying to find his keys. Anywho, she tells Billy that she had a run-in with one of the goons, and I just love how she repeats his name, and he's just sitting there ignoring her as if she doesn't even exist. Which, honestly, I would ignore her too, because there really isn't much to her character besides being the love interest and nothing else. Billy? Billy? 
Billy, Billy, Billy. So Billy gets pulled over by the mob, which leads us to our very first fight scene in the movie. I should also mention that he can apparently punch and kick through biker dudes' helmets, as if his hands and feet are made out of fucking bricks. Yet I love how he could just throw these guys around like they have ragdoll physics straight from a video game. So anyways, despite the effort, the mobsters manage to overwhelm him and bring him down. Steiner tells him that he has until morning to decide whether or not he wants to join them. Spoilers! He doesn't. I'm just trying to save you guys some time. He then meets up with his journalist friend who explains to him what we already know about the syndicate and how joining them probably wouldn't be the best idea. I just don't want to write an obituary on you. I like you too much. Foreshadowing. We cut away to the syndicate where Dr. Lance sends Robert Wall to confront him and send him a final warning. <laughs> Basquiat loves to fight kids. Wait, what did you say? Basquiat loves to fight kids. Could you repeat that one more time? Basquiat loves to fight kids. Alright, I'm just going to turn on the subtitles for this. Basquiat loves to fight kids. See, with subtitles it makes sense. In the next scene, Billy meets with his uncle who is in his dressing room putting on makeup, which I swear makes me think of Captain Spaulding from Devil's Rejects. I heard that the syndicate is after you. You must be a big man. How did you know that? I read the script. So the goons show up and we get another stellar fight scene, yet I love how the people are reacting to all this going on, which kind of makes it seem more comedic, especially given that they are in a dressing room. By far, the sword is the better actor in that scene. So the goons manage to take down Billy once again and tell him that this was another warning. Which I'm sure by beating him up again, this will definitely make him join you guys. Oh, by the way, this was a waste of time. So after the syndicate finally realizes they are only wasting their efforts in convincing this guy to join them, Dr. Land finally tells his henchmen to assassinate Billy. And it's about damn time, because now we're getting into the good stuff. Brace yourselves, people. So Billy is on another movie set, and it's in this scene that they decide to do a shooting scene. So gotta break out the good old clips of Bruce Lee from Fist of Fury for this one. Cut. Jeez, what a wimp. That bullet didn't even come out of that gun, that was baby powder. Jeez, you're such a pansy, Billy. So one of the henchmen manages to shoot Billy in the face, and what we get is some pretty brutal imagery, which I gotta say, that is not a bad looking makeup effect for 1978. Yet then, the most funny moment of this entire scene is hearing Colin Camp scream, which for some reason, they decided to loop it. <laughs> Oh my god, you're killing me, movie. You're killing me. So at the hospital, we find out that Billy is actually alive, yet he somehow convinces the doctor to fake his death and alter his appearance so that he can go undercover and take out the syndicate. There will have to be a complete falsification of documents. Even though what you're doing is highly illegal. Just saying. So after all that, we get perhaps one of the most tasteless most offensive things in cinematic history. They decided to use footage of Bruce Lee's funeral in this movie. Yeah, this is real. And it's clearly exploitation. Which, when I first watched this, I was so offended and so disgusted that I actually stopped watching this movie. It's a movie that mishandles Bruce Lee's work. It's a fucking disgrace. And to everyone who worked on this, you should be ashamed of yourselves. I'm sorry if I sound so annoyed by this, but I'm a huge fan of Bruce Lee. And I just want to see his work get the respect and admiration that it deserves. Not be 
a cash cow for people to bank on. So after the funeral, Billy starts to put his plan into motion. He puts on a disguise, a fake full beard, and a pair of sunglasses. Ah yes, the most clever of disguises. So the rest of the movie is essentially him going after the syndicate, which he manages to have a fight against Bob Wall, whom he manages to kill. And this is by far one of the most fun fight scenes in the entire movie. Especially when Bob is pulling on Billy's arms, trying to stretch him, and Billy manages to do a spring kick right into his face. Seriously, me explaining this to you doesn't do this fight scene justice. You need to check it out for yourselves. So, of course, the Syndicate realizes that it's Billy that's going after them. So, they decide to kidnap his girlfriend. So, now, Billy has to come out of hiding and go after them. Oh my god, finally are we gonna get to see some Bruce Lee action? Cause I've been waiting on that. Come on movie, give me what I want. This is also where he takes out the motorcycle dudes and manages to snag the iconic yellow tracksuit that we see in the archived footage. So now everything comes into full circle and we actually get to see Bruce Lee in action. And I gotta say, these last few minutes is the best thing about this movie. So Billy arrives to the restaurant where the syndicate is, and it's then and there that we cut to what we came to see, the actual footage of Bruce Lee. Now of course there were some changes to the footage that we see in this movie, which I understand that they had to make sure it matches the reshoots, but for some reason the footage looks saturated compared to the actual footage. You'll see that the color of the suit looks orange in this movie, when it's supposed to be yellow. I should also mention that this tracksuit has become iconic. It's been referenced in video games and other action movies. It's become a Bruce Lee staple. And while I may never know why he decided to go with the yellow tracksuit, I don't really care because I love it. And that's really all I have to say about it. Now, of course, we only get 11 minutes of this footage, which is a shame that we don't get more of this because this is by far Bruce Lee's best work. The fights are fluid and fast-paced. You get these facial expressions, which I love. And the fight with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar manages to be a spectacle in its own right. And Kareem can really handle himself with Lee. So there's some really great stuff in this, and I kind of see where Bruce Lee was going with this. In fact, there was a documentary called Bruce Lee, A Warrior's Journey, which not only shows us the original footage of Bruce Lee's Game of Death, but it also explains the original plot, which the movie was going to be more of an action-adventure type, where Bruce Lee must go through a pergata, fighting all these different martial artists in order to retrieve an ancient artifact. And honestly, that sounds like a much better movie than what we got with Robert Klaus's Game of Death, which is a poor attempt of telling us an intriguing story with this archived footage. I almost forgot to mention the music. The music was composed by John Barry, the same guy that did the James Bond films. And you all know how good the music score in those films are, which the music score in this movie is just as great. It's just the movie itself sucks, yet the music rocks. It kicks ass. So listen to the music. Fuck the movie. <laughs> listen to the music and also watch Bruce Lee's footage. That's really all you should care about when it comes to this movie. But nevertheless, let's wrap all this up. So Billy manages to get through everyone and makes it to Dr. Land, which it turns out that he took his own life. Which is very unfortunate. Yeah, it's a fake. So Dr. Land manages to trick Billy in an attempt to escape, which Billy goes after him. You guys know I had to insert that in there, and I feel good about it. So Dr. Land falls to his death, and Billy saves the day. Roll credits. 
Now moving on to my afterthoughts of this movie. While I did enjoy the fight scenes, and while I enjoy the music and the last 11 minutes of the movie, which is the Bruce Lee footage, the actual Bruce Lee footage, which is why you should watch this movie, but the rest of it is just complete and utter crap, and it's nothing more than just exploitation on Bruce Lee's work and his good name. Like, there is seriously no reason why you should go out of your way to watch this movie unless you skip all the way to the end. Because that would be the only reason to watch this movie. The plot makes no sense, the characters are one-dimensional and are not worth giving a fuck about. Like, I do not care about Billy, I don't care about his girlfriend, I don't care about the syndicate or what their motives were. Because it's never explained what their motives are. Like, this movie fails at everything. There is just no reason to give a fuck about this movie. So I highly recommend you guys to go watch the documentary Bruce Lee, A Warrior's Journey. And just fuck Game of Death. Just do not watch this movie. Anyways, this has been Pirate Canvas. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments section below. And also be sure to follow me on Twitter at Canvas Pirate. Anyways, this has been Pirate Canvas, signing off. I'll see you guys in the next video.